Congressional investigation is underway. It's in response to a report that was published earlier this summer by the New York Times that detailed how health officials in the Biden administration lobbied to remove age minimums for gender mutilation surgeries on minors. Why did they do that? Because of concerns over political fallout. Well, in a letter that was sent yesterday, Congresswoman Lisa McClain notified Health and Human Services Secretary Becerra that the House Committee on Oversight and Accountability is investigating allegations of political interference by his department in the recommendations of third-party medical organizations. And joining me now to discuss this is Congresswoman McClain. And by the way, uh, as a part of the Oversight Committee, she is the chairwoman of the Health Care uh, and Financial Services Subcommittee, and she represents the 9th District of Michigan. Congresswoman McLean, always great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening on Washington Watch. Good to see you, Jody. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. Hope you are. Yeah. All right, let's, yeah, let's start with, the, you know, for those who may have missed the New York Times piece, why don't you just kind of bring us up to speed on what they actually uncovered? Well, what they uncovered and they believe is that the Biden and Harris administration actually bullied or pressured um, the HHS to remove age from gender transition surgery. So there used to be an age that you had to be 18 years old in order to have this surgery performed upon you. Well, the Biden and Harris administration, as they normally do, you know, they bend a knee to their radical progressive lefts. When when it came out, the age requirement or restriction was completely removed. Isn't that interesting? I mean, this administration, we believe, pressured and bullied them to remove the age restriction where they put their radical agenda above the safety and health of our young children. And let me put this in perspective for you, Jody. This is repulsive, it's disgusting, and it's unfathomable. I I cannot imagine a scenario where this makes sense. So I have to be 21 in my state to buy alcohol, to consume alcohol. Um, That makes sense. There's some guard wears, there's some restrictions. Why? Because you grow, you you mature, you know, your, your brain is developing. Now, I have to be 21 years old to buy alcohol, yet I can be of any age to get a gender transition surgery that is not reversible. I cannot reverse it. Once it's done, it's done. Can someone in in their right mind explain to me why this makes sense? I can't I can't fathom it. I can't fathom it either. It just, it is mind boggling. It is beyond disturbing. It is, it is so surreal that we are even dealing with this kind of issue. Uh, And, and, and it, it appears, and maybe you can clarify this for me. It appears as though all of this they did for political purposes. It was that they were fearful of potential political fallout from their base. And so that is what drove them this. Is that uh, seemingly what you're finding Well, that's what we believe, because I can't connect the dots. I can I can assure you I can assure you why they didn't do that and why they didn't do it was to protect the safety of our children. That was not number one on their list. Right. But that's for my goodness. You tobacco companies make sure that you have all of these disclaimers. I'm not saying that's wrong, but make sure you have the disclaimers. Make sure you're of certain age before you can buy this product. But if you want to do an irreversible surgery, hey, you can do that at eight years old. Doesn't matter. No, there's no there's no uh, there's no age restriction. They clearly didn't put the children at the top of their list. That's what's so disgusting and repulsive to me. Yeah, and I think that's a point that needs to be hammered over and over and over. So so I, I think the problems, the concerns with all of this are multiple. I mean, obviously, the children are, are top, but, but, but also the abuse of the federal government to twist this type of stuff, to force it, to uh, churn it, if you will, for political purposes. 
But as, as you're sending this letter, uh, oversight is getting involved. What are you asking for? What are you looking for? I want to know if there was communication between the administration and the, in the various departments. I want to know what role that the administration or these departments had um, had in this. I want to know whose bright idea was it to remove the age restriction. And what I, what I believe that we're going to find out is they don't get to make the laws, right? Is That's what Congress does. Why, why the secrecy? Why is this all undercover? And why is it so bad? So I want to know what role and who played a role in it. And I will assure you this, Jody, I will not rest until we find out those answers, because it is our job to protect our children. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Well, and listen, hats off to you, uh, to everyone on the Oversight Committee and all, er, everyone who's involved in this. This is um, this is horrifying that is taking place. In fact, the, the White House, and I, as I understand it, they came out saying uh, they don't support gender affirming surgery for minors. And then they got a little bit of backlash from that. So they, they came back and clarified that statement, in essence, saying, well, uh, yeah, we, we believe it ought to be for minors, but we, we do support the gender affirming care for minors. I mean, again, it's just bouncing all over the place, and as you said, absolutely with no thought whatsoever for the well-being of the minors. Exactly, and that's the frustrating part is, is with this administration. I mean, we see it constantly with the Biden and Harris administration. I mean, uh, Vice President Harris can't figure out what she stands for. She stands for fracking one day. She doesn't stand for fracking. She she stands for oh, we should have age uh, uh, um, uh, uh, age restrictions on this gender trans uh, transformational or as you said mutilation surgery. Oh no, I don't. Pick an idea. Pick an agenda. Pick a policy, and stick to it. But she can't because she has no clue what she's talking about, and she has no clue what she stands for. She she uh, um, gives a policy. And then she waits to see what her radical base says and how that radical base reacts. That's who yeah. she's pandering to. That's who she's catering to. And it's repulsive to me to put the yeah. rat, her radical agenda over the care and safety and security of minors is disgusting. Absolutely. Well, listen, before I let you go, because this is really related, it's uh, government putting pressure on Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook. He caved. Uh, with all, during all the COVID stuff, yep. all that sort of stuff, he caved. He's now admitted that, that he bowed to the pressure of the Biden administration uh, as they were pushing him to push their narrative. Uh, about a minute we have left. Your thoughts on that? Uh, um, well, he finally admitted what we knew all along, which was true. He violated the First Amendment. He kowtowed to, to, again, the progressive Democrats or Democrats in general to suppress information. But the problem is this, Jody, what was his consequence? Nothing. Zip, zilch, zero. Yeah. And that's what Congress must do, is we must put protections in place that hold these social media um, companies accountable for their actions, and we have to we have to begin to put protections for the average citizens, so these media companies cannot um, exploit um, and do what they're doing for political purposes. That's what we need to do. We need to revise some of these pr uh, protections that these social media companies enjoy. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah. Congresswoman Lisa McLean, thank you so much for joining us. You always do a great job standing tall and proud and effective for all of us. Thank you for joining us this evening on Washington Watch. Keep up the good work. Thank you. It's great to see you again.